All right, so now we'll talk about the Kyle Bame finish. Obviously, you could isolate the finish to what it was, an unset up shot that led to an arm in guillotine, right? But there was a lot that set that shot up. So I knew Kyle would come out and pull guard. He did come out and pull guard. I knew he was quite physically strong. And I really knew that he, I won't say he only uses strength from the bottom position there, but I will say that there are things you can do to a guy that plays guard like Kyle that can lead to him becoming fatigued. So my strategy was to not necessarily take the pass if it was there, because really if I, Kyle has excellent submission defense because he's so good from EBI. Say for example, uh, it's the scrambles in which I think we can really cause Kyle to panic and fatigue. But if I were to take mount, take back control, take side control on Kyle, he's gonna go into his defensive frames, it's gonna be hard to submit, he's gonna be relaxed. And ultimately, he's probably gonna get out of those positions. But if I can keep him in the gray area, I believe he's going, I believed he was going to use uh, too much strength in those frames to try to prevent me passing that was gonna gas him out. <clears throat> and I knew if I was effective in that, I could potentially take his back as he tries to stand up. If you see a guy on bottom um, getting tired, he's gonna try to stand up. Ultimately, if you're on bottom, you're attacking, you're attacking, nothing's happening, you're gonna be like, I'm just getting exhausted, Danny, I'm gonna stand up. So that's what I did to Kyle, really. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take his back off the stand up, but I was able to see him standing up and know that that meant he was getting tired. And I could also hear that <clears throat> in his breathing. And what I was doing was I was playing sort of outside passing. I was worried about Kyle's outside heel hook on my left leg. My right leg, I feel great if someone attacks, but obviously everyone has a strong and a weak side and Kyle overwhelmingly attacks the outside heel hook on people's left leg. So I wanted to avoid him attacking that leg at all costs. So I was playing some outside passing. I was sort of hanging out in a gray area where I wasn't necessarily going 100% for the pass, but he was 100% defending it. I think at one stage I was able to take a take a knee cut on him and complete the pass. But again, like I said earlier, his uh, defensive strategies from those solidified positions are very good. But it's the in-between positions where we can cause him to fatigue. And there was one moment actually where I got close to a pass. I probably could have finished the pass, but I knew there was 45 seconds left until points. So I tried to stall a bit there and complete the pass after points. But the referee he was onto me. He wasn't onto me like he was onto Kyna, but he was definitely onto me. And he told me for some action and Kyle got his guard back. Kyle stood up and I already knew he was tired. And again, when you're tired, you make bad decisions. And I could actually see him. He kept like looking at my legs and he went for one double leg at one point. And I was like, I th I'm pretty confident he's going to try to shoot a double leg before the points period ends. Obviously, if you are tired, you want to score those points before overtime because overtime's another fucking five minutes, which if you're tired, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like an hour, right? So Kyle, he took a shot, and the problem with his shot was he didn't set it up at all. Like he just sort of changed levels and went for it out in the open. And that's very, very risky. And me, in that moment, I have a choice, and that is basically, do I wanna sprawl and stuff this takedown, or do I potentially wanna go for a submission threat from that position? And again, when he did take the shot, he was so extended that I had such a great ability to get around the neck and trap an arm. I was pretty confident I could hit an arm in guillotine on him because Kyle's sub defense is really good, uh, especially in an EBI context, EBI context, but I didn't think his ability to defend guillotines would be great because again, he's not a wrestler. He's kind of like me. He's like, if I'm shooting, you know, things are, things are going wrong for me, right? So we had, this arm in position, all right. So what I wanna do off my grips here is I always start it off the chin strap here and then I connect my hands over the top like this. What I wanna do with this grip is scoop my hands right up. So you can see when I take this grip, I wanna scoop it in to JB's throat and start collapsing the top of his head. And because his shot wasn't set up, I was able to really bend his neck really tight before he hit the ground. If you do this too late, JB probably puts his forehead on the floor and keeps good posture. And now I'm really struggling to bend the neck. But the earlier we bend it, the deeper it lands when we're in this position here. So you can see JB's neck is already collapsed at this point. 
Something else I want to do here is I don't want to land flat on my back and I don't want to keep my head far from JB's head. I want to keep my shoulder at the base of his spine and I want to keep everything forward. If I arch back, there's a good chance his head slips straight out here. So what I want to do from this position is fall onto the side, pull everything tight and in a perfect world, secure the closed guard here. Obviously, if I don't secure the closed guard, he has a good potential to push my knee and start to turn. And then he starts to roll and we have a scramble out of these positions here. So I knew if I was able to secure the closed guard here, he really doesn't have too many options here, right? So again, you can see I'm on the side, I'm collapsing his neck, I'm bringing everything in tight, and I'm really trying to crunch everything in tight. Just about, what's funny about this was, on ADCC 2019 against Mason Fowler, I finished day one with the exact same submission. That match was obviously much more brutal, much more tense, but it's just funny to me, I hit the same arm in guillotine setup on both uh, Mason and on Kyle Bain out of wrestling exchanges to obviously get me through to lose ultimately in day two, but we got to day two. That's important as well.